he could talk fans into building those great promos. Half the people in that audience completely identified with Raven. They were Raven acolytes. And, you know, in them, in their head, they're just like him. I do want to focus on Raven leaving for WCW very shortly afterwards. And I think, and I hate to say this, I hope I'm not taking a... Uh, uh, I think Raven was even inviting other people to go to WCW with him at the time. I don't know if it was Stevie. I don't know if it was somebody else. This is something, as I say, I'm just plucking out the air. But mm. um, how big of a loss was uh, Raven to the ECW? Huge. Huge. He brought to the table a uh, an acumen of the sport that was very different from what the franchise character gave. There's no time you ever watch either of those two characters and go, oh, these guys are really birds of a feather, right? Uh, Raven character, you know, the, the brooding, grungy, hair metal band type character, hip on his shoulder, always whining and complaining like the Gen Xers did. Uh, you know, that was a, it was so timely and so relevant that I don't think had you left the belt on me, my character would have sold and drew in as many of those people in the counterculture, I guess we'll say, as say Raven would. Um, Raven had an incredible grasp, has an incredible grasp of the business. And when he came to ECW, uh, he, he demonstrated that, that he could deliver this in a different way than being the yelling, screaming heel or, uh, you know, just one vein or two veins or one trick or two tricks. Uh, Raven came in there and, and went a completely different direction than say the franchise character would have, <clears throat> albeit, uh, still drew, albeit still held the company together and still supplanted that rule once the franchise was gone, that there is still a top player here who's been around the business for quite a while, knows his way around the ring. And, uh, uh, yeah, so I, I think, you know, the, the losing him, obviously, was a, a big kick in the gut for us. Paul, at the time, I'm sure, would have been saying, nah, that's no big deal. We're not going to stop him from making money and you know, again, playing that high rule thing, we're going to play by the rules or we're not going to let them see us sweat. And meanwhile, I think to the fans, they expected ECW, if any promotion, should fire back on that, right? Immediately, he took one of our top stars. Well, now we're going for your jugular. And, uh, you know, again, in hindsight, looking how there was a collusion between Paul and, and Vince <clears throat> and how there was this non-attempt to stave off anybody that was leaving for, say, WCW or WWF. Um, I think that, you know, that for them to be able to get somebody like Raven out of there, I think Vince would have seen that as a big win. Like we were able to cherry pick him away. Um, and obviously it would be a big uh, letdown to ECW because if you take my reign as world champion and Raven's reign as world champion, you've got a big chunk of that seven-year run covered. Right, there was it was pretty specific to the two of us. Plus, when Paul would put us, excuse me, excuse me, um, our chemistry was really fantastic. We trusted each other. Um, he went out and delivered. It didn't matter up or down. Uh, Scotty was always able to deliver on his end of things, and uh, you know, I, I think that played really well for Easton because it was such a drastically different character than the, the just previous world champion. And again, going back to the Bill Watts thing, it's different is good. You know, different and proficient is great when they can still give a great promo, albeit the inverse universe of, say, a franchise promo. I can't do what he does, and I'm pretty sure he can't do what I did with the characters and promos. No less compelling and no less articulate and no no less drawable uh, and doing it. He could talk fans into building those great promos. Half the people in that audience completely identified with Raven. They were Raven acolytes. And, you know, in them, in their head, they're just like him. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of trust fund babies out there. We know now for sure, like Tony Khan, right, that we're in the, in the, in the uh, buildings quite a bit watching ECW. And so when you see a Raven, character that goes out excuse me goes out and can compel the audience in a completely different way than the franchise character would have done it to me that's good you know that you you know you, you can do it a different way and it gives the fans yet a different flavor
Yeah, when I said before, uh, Raven and maybe tried to invite somebody else, I was thinking it's somewhere in my head. No, it's two. Canyon? It, Canyon? It, no, it's two lines down that I wrote it. That's why I could. Anyway, so I'm an idiot. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, explain that in a second. Uh, Raven leaves for WCW uh, a few months later. Three year deal at $225,000 per year, uh, a couple of months after. Uh, the pay-per-view, and apparently he and Tommy Dreamer nearly got into a fight over Ravens leaving ECW and asking if Dreamer wanted to join him in WCW. Mm. Uh, I didn't really... I mean, I knew that, like, Dreamer was, like, super loyal to ECW, but, uh, like, throwing down over it, that's... Uh, yeah. That, that's taken it to a, a pretty uh, strong degree. Yeah, yeah. It's all... T- Tommy always seemed uh, very bought in to ECW. He also was very eager to learn. Like he would constantly come and ask me, especially in those first six, seven, eight months, he would come to me and, you know, uh, well, how do I get these fans to stop booing me? And, you know, this happened and that happened or whatever. And we just, you know, plan it and sell it to him in pieces that uh, a baby face gets over by losing if it's done the right way. Um, you know, and, and so he learned a lot of that coming up. And and just in general, his personality is obviously way more what my someone called chill today than say mine or Bam Bam's was. Um, you know, so uh to me it's there's never one thing there's not a single wrestler in the business that can go out and say, Everybody should copy me to a T and we're all gonna be great. Because each one of us brings our own skill sets. Uh the company sees something in that maybe somebody else doesn't see. And, uh, you know, for me, Raven, to bring it back to your question, Raven and watching the first promo he did there as, a, uh, uh, you know, his, his goth character, you know, the, uh, uh, the, the, the whining, complaining, it, he, he looked like he had been selectively bred from that generation. These are the kids that grew up listening to Nirvana, the world sucks, everybody's taking advantage of me. And to me, I've always said the heel that's dangerous is the heel that can go out there and tell you he's going to rape an 80-year-old woman, explain it, and you walk away going, makes perfect sense. Because this is really sociopathic thinking, right? I'm going to go out and do some, harm somebody. and But those ECW fans in their own got it. And Scotty's delivery was so different from anything that came before him. That's where I think he, he really showed his true promise in that he can come in here, he can step right into that role, deliver this amazing promos, that the fan is going to stay. They're not going to turn a uh, channel surf during. They're going to want to li- <clears throat> stop and listen to what he has to say. And because it was so diametrically opposite the way I was doing promos, I thought that they could definitely have legs, and it proved out that he would. 